Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the state of the used PC components market, especially when we're looking at those different marketplaces, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, those different outlets for people to find those cheap PC components that will allow them to build a computer for as low a cost as possible while getting the most amount of performance possible. It's really right now a great time to be building a PC. Even if you're using new parts, it's a great time, but especially the used parts market right now gives you an opportunity to build a great PC at a very low cost. And I wanna to talk today about the state of that market. Now, before we get started, it is totally worth noting that uh, I'm gonna be talking about trends that I've been seeing and sort of giving you some recommendations that I look at from my own market, which is in the Midwest in the United States. So if you're elsewhere in the world, obviously your market may be very different than mine. And the other thing is, although I'm gonna give recommendations of some parts to stay away from right now, if you find a great deal on a part or on a combo especially, then uh, go ahead and jump at it if it's something that's gonna suit the needs for you. Because one of the first things you should always ask yourself when building a PC is just what you need it to do. And if you find a great deal, even if it's on parts that I'm saying you should shy away from, if it's a good deal, it's a good deal. Go ahead and hit the buy button or shoot off, off that offer to uh, somebody on Facebook or on Craigslist or elsewhere in the world like Gumtree or something like that. A good deal is a good deal and you should never shy away from a good deal. Even if there are some drawbacks, good deal is a good deal. So to start off with a few trends that I've noticed, first and foremost, the RX 470s, 480s, 570s, and 580s continue, at least in my area, to rule the 1080p market, especially in the middle and lower ranges if you're looking at used parts. Right now, you can typically find a 470 or a 480, we're talking about the four gigabyte versions at least, for well under $100. In fact, I just bought one for like $80. It's a 480, four gigabyte card from MSI for $80 shipped to my door. So those continue to be extremely good value propositions for somebody that's just trying to get on the 1080p gaming on the PC side of things at or around 60 FPS. Obviously in esports titles, the 470s, 480s, 570s, and 580s are likely gonna get you well above that 60 FPS mark. And if you're looking at modern AAA titles, you should be able to get at least close to that 60 FPS mark. Though at this point, they are starting to get a little bit long in the tooth. So you may have to knock down settings a little bit with some games, but for the most part, for that 80 to $100 price, and even a little bit north of $100 if you're looking at eight gigabyte versions of those cards, those are about the best value propositions right now. If you're looking at things like the 1060s from NVIDIA, they're typically a little bit more expensive than the AMD counterparts, so they're usually not a great buy, though that's not to say that you can't find NVIDIA cards at a really solid price point around that area as well. It's just a little bit less common to see the NVIDIA cards like the 1060s. Uh, in that price range where you see the 580s and 480s especially. Another trend that I've seen on the used market, and this has been the case for a while now, is that Intel CPUs continue to be overpriced, especially when we're looking at KB Lake and then on down to about Sandy Bridge. That's the 7000 series on the way down to the 2000 series. They're just overpriced for what they are, especially more and more as those AMD CPUs start to hit the market more on that in just a second. But these Intel CPUs that feature a maximum of four cores on the mainstream platforms from the 7000 series down are still going off for a really high price, especially when you're seeing i5s that are going for around $100, sometimes a little bit less, closer to $80, depending on if we're looking at the unlocked versions, the K-SKUs or not. But basically, unless you already have everything in place, like you already have the platform and you're really just looking for a CPU upgrade, from an i3 to an i5 or an i5 to an i7, they're really not something you should be parting together piecemeal style just because you're paying a premium for those CPUs. And those Intel CPUs are making less and less sense with our third trend that I wanna mention, and that is that first and second generation Ryzen processors are finally starting to hit the used market in some mass. I've definitely noticed over the last couple of months seeing more AMD Ryzen 1200s, 1400s, 1600s on the used market in my local area. In fact, I've snagged a few of those deals for really solid values. And the AMD Ryzen first gen processors are really making those old Intel CPUs just completely obsolete because for about the same money, you can get yourself onto the Ryzen platform, which of course gives you a far better upgrade path than anything Intel has to offer, especially up until the 8000 series came along. 
but with 7000 and below series Intel CPUs, you're looking at an absolute maximum of four cores and eight threads on their mainstream platform, whereas you can hop in with a quad-core Ryzen 1200 and have a very easy upgrade path, just a drop-in CPU upgrade to upgrade the 1200 to something like the 3600 or 3700X, get yourself six cores or even eight cores, or if you're a little bit crazy and hopefully you have a good motherboard for this, you could go all the way up to 16 cores and 32 threads on the AM4 platform. It's just the forwards compatibility that you get with B350 and X370 boards and up is just far superior to anything Intel has to offer, especially though prior to their 8000 series of processors. And now I want to talk a little bit about some just general recommendations that I've seen, things that you should be looking to buy and things you should probably sort of just sell or just pass on the offer. And the first thing that you should kind of pass on are old Dell Optiplexes. Now, I understand right now you can still get them very often for around $100 and they're often equipped with eight gigabytes of RAM. They normally come with like an i5-3470. Sometimes they come with storage, sometimes they don't. But the fact of the matter is, first of all, this is just a very outdated platform in general. But then you have some other things that you have to fight against unless you're getting a very low-end GPU or at least a very low power requirement GPU, you're going to have to upgrade the power supply. If you get a larger GPU, you're going to have to recase it, which presents its own issues with those Optiplex motherboards and different sensors and different pinouts for power supply or rather for power buttons and that sort of thing. Recasing those Optiplexes is not the easiest thing in the world and usually you just have to deal with some error codes and that sort of thing, which is doable, but it's not necessarily what you really want to have to do if you're going to be investing that kind of money. And because, again, going back to Ryzen, there's just so many Ryzen processors out there. You can get like a 1200 for around $40. And even on the used market, if you get a local deal, you can get it even cheaper than that and then pair it with a cheap B350, B450 motherboard. You can get for about $100 onto the Ryzen platform, which is just a much better platform to be on. So right now, unless you just want to get onto PC gaming as absolute cheaply as possible and you're looking at the lower side of things like esports, then I would just kind of pass on the optiplexes and go for a completely built by piece Ryzen system, something like a 1200 system, 1400, 1600 system. One of those is going to serve you and not cost very much at all, more than just getting up and running with an Optiplex system might. Going back to our buy list then, definitely pick up 480s and RX 580s. If you find them less than $100, those are really solid values. If you're trying to get onto 1080p gaming on a budget, again, those 480s, 580s are a really great buy. Next up on our pass list is i5 Intel Pro processors from KB Lake and on down, so the 7000 series down, especially if you're buying them individually. The i5 processors that are offered there are not going to perform much better than a Ryzen 1200 and everything else around them is going to be more expensive because those motherboards are no longer as readily available. You're going to probably spend a little bit more on a motherboard for one of those KB Lake or earlier processors. You're going to end up spending the exact same on RAM because we're talking DDR4 RAM in both cases. But then if you're upgrading to an i7, the i7 KB Lake upgrade is going to be significantly more expensive, especially at KB Lake and Sky Lake and even still down to Haswell i7s are quite expensive versus upgrading like a 1200 to a Ryzen 1600 or 2600, which you can get a 1600 often on local deals for right around $100 or even online for around $100. And I recently picked one up for like $60 and then I got like a $20 power supply with it. So I spent $80 and got the processor and a power supply. So the Ryzen platform offers cheaper upgrades and higher core and thread counts, which more and more games are taking advantage of. So those i5s from the KB Lake and earlier generation that only feature four cores and four threads, they're pretty long in the tooth right now. So unless you get a really great deal on them, probably pass on those. And the last piece of advice when we're talking about the state of the current used price to performance market especially is when you see a good deal, go ahead and buy that good deal. Even if it's something like an i5 KB Lake, if you find a solid one out there that's for the right price, maybe it comes with a motherboard and RAM, then go ahead and jump on that. Yes, upgrade costs down the road may be a little bit more than you would like, but you know what? You can always completely go to a different platform as well. You could always sell the motherboard and the processor if you're looking to move to something like a more modern Intel system or maybe just a Ryzen system. You can always sell the old parts and then bring in a completely new platform. So a good deal is a good deal. And if you find a good deal, go ahead and jump on that because even if it goes against all my recommendations, 
If the value is there for you, that's absolutely what you should do. So those are just the trends and sort of recommendations that I've seen over the second half or so of 2019 as I've been putting together different PCs. It's actually funny because I recommended against the i5s and I actually have an i5 Skylake system coming up in the very near future that I'm just waiting on the last couple of parts to come in for. But that's going to be a really solid performer for the price that I got it for. And I think it's going to look pretty nice as well. But of course, I do want to hear from you guys what do you think about the used market right now where do you see the value especially if you're somebody that is trying to put together a uh, pc with the used parts as cheaply as possible while still getting great performance what are you specifically looking at what gpus cpus that sort of thing let us know all your thoughts on the issue in those comments down below and of course if you like the video give it a like share subscribe comment all those things are very helpful to the channel you can follow me both on instagram and on twitter at who's your hardware and as always i'll let youtube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch i'm shane with who's your hardware and i'll see you guys in the next video